particular here today because I was minding my own business last night watching the Cavaliers play the Timber Pups, and this happens. Oof. LeBron James. Wow. Let's discuss, please, how much is going on here. LeBron doesn't just look off the defenders. His head goes completely the other way, two hands between Andrew Wiggins' legs to a moving target in Derek Williams. Look, this comes less than two weeks after LeBron pulled off this driving left-handed hook pass to Kevin Love. I mean, his passing is getting just ridiculous, and this is considering he's a player who already had a phenomenal catalog of dimes to choose from. Remember this one on Timo Moskov? Oh, this one's one of my favorites. Right? Yeah. Boom. Perfect bounce. You, you want to see this again, right? Yeah. Come on. Look at that. Not even looking. And how about the behind-the-back gem to Eric Dampier? He had a couple of these to Dampier. Look at this one. Damp almost messed up the catch. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron has so much range when it comes to his passing game. I love that one to RJ because it's not just the force he uses and the accuracy over distance, but he's just slicing through Gortat and Sessions. Yeah, move, uh, getting it through moving bodies. Right. Moving bodies. Right on the money. It's amazing. Yeah. So all of this got us at the jump thinking about how the NBA has these great all-time players, the ones who weren't just known for their passing, but were still Hall of Fame level passers. I call this the Wayne Gretzky paradigm, as in Gretzky, still the NHL's all-time assist leader. But it's not like he was a career setup man. He was also Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> LeBron, one of the best passers of his generation. Oh, but by the way, he's also LeBron James in his spare time. So who else is in this category? Remember, guys like Jason Williams, Jason Kidd, John Stockton, they are out. Passing was the lifeblood of what those guys did, so that, that's not who we're talking about here. Larry Bird, though? Mmm, definitely on right this there. list. Look at this. I mean, and, and watch. Look at this one. <laughs> he'll, let you, he'll let you know about it, too. That's the best part. <laughs> now, as for Oscar Robertson, we don't have a ton of video to back it up, but I'm going to trust folks like Kareem, who watched and played against <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> played with him, huh? <laughs> played with Oscar, <laughs> would say he's on this list, too. Absolutely. Of course, Yes, and, and of course, like all good sports arguments, the trouble when you start trying to define the parameters. I say Magic Johnson qualifies. I mean, yes, of course. Cheating. If you had to say the greatest thing about him, you would say it's his passing. But he was so elite in so many other ways, I want to put him on here. Amin has already started arguing with me about this, saying if you're going to say that about Magic, he says you also have to say this about two-time MVP Steve Nash. Now, I don't know. Oh. We know Shaquille O'Neal, for example, would certainly argue that Nash is more in the Jason Kidd white chocolate category. Amin feels otherwise. And then what about players? like Chris Webber, right? Tremendous well, passer, known for something else should besides be a Hall passing. Of Famer. Should be but, a Hall of well, Famer. okay, he's not in the Hall of Fame yet, though. Is he elite enough overall of a player to be in this discussion? And on the other side, you've got Steph Curry, definitely elite enough. Would you oh. consider his passing, though, Hall of Fame level in and of itself? And, and I don't know. I mean, it, only if we had one of the greatest players of all time here to help us out. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, wait. We did. You would put Oscar on that list. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, Oscar did things that you have no idea. I, I wish he could have played with the three-point line because he had incredible range, but uh, he didn't have the three-point line to, uh, to test it. So we'll never know on that one. Yes, and the passing, of course, was a magic. Now, do you agree with me that magic is more in the category of... for a year... Uh, that's uh, incredible, and nobody's going to do that. Ha! Ha! I just, uh, my thing is this. You said guys who passing wasn't the lifeblood of the game. When you say Magic Johnson, the first thing that comes to anybody's mind is passing. He was the Wait, greatest he, passer that we've seen in this league. This, ever. I agree with you. This is where this gets sticky, but he just did so many other things. But I, so, wouldn't put, but so, I wouldn't say him but so did Jason, Jason Kidd. So did Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd wasn't just a passer. He's a tremendous rebounding, a rebounder as a guard. He's a tremendous defensive player. Magic Johnson was Magic Johnson. But see, that's, he just wanted magic <laughs> highlights. That's, that's my whole point. And, and, you know, the world championships kind of distort everything because we're not uh, doing it on the individual's talent. Right, right, right. But on the achievements of the team. And that, that kind of distorts that because uh, the individual kind of loses in that, in that scene. Bill Walton, Bill Russell? Tough. Oh, geez, tough. Uh, and basically the same guy uh, in different generations. Right. Uh, playing it from the defensive end down to the offensive end uh, and making it work.
You want Sabonis. It's a bonus. I think people great don't, passer. Don't, yeah. don't appreciate what a great passer and what a great player he was before he got hurt. That's what's tough about him. Yeah. He probably would be in that super elite conversation if he had played in the NBA for a different section of his career. And the last one we were talking about right before we went on air was Wilt. He led the league in assists, assists. one year. I mean, he had it in him when he wanted to be. I'm Sam never Lacey. kicking Wilt off anyway. Sam Lacey, that's right. Anywhere. Another one. Sam Lacey was a great, great. passer. You know, this unsung. Is, this could set you to YouTube, people. Yeah.